Welcome back. So last time I was assembling these um, stick fixtures here and now I'm in doing the install. So as you can see I've got the right hand side one in and that's just basically sitting there and bolted up but I still need to drill, uh, match drill the holes through those FR4 blocks and then bolt those into place. But I just wanted to make sure everything was moving smoothly before I did that. And now I've got that done, bolted in. So this is just a bit of that um, test 6061 um, aluminum square tube. I'm just using that, and you can see there's you know those rollers are working really nice. Got got it dialed in. There's no um, like play in it, but it roll it rolls on there really smoothly. And likewise, those bearings that are allowing the uh, rotation for the aileron control are working nice and smoothly as well. So there's li literally no friction whatsoever on that whole setup. So uh, any friction that comes in into it is going to be coming from downstream on the aileron or the elevator connections so pretty happy um, with how the install went for that and didn't have too many too much trouble match drilling the bolts and you, as you can see even when I put load on it, I'm actually pushing down and pulling up on the stick um, while I turn it it's um, working fine there so this is the one on the left hand side um, same deal there nice and smooth and I actually tried it too with the um, aileron linkages connected and just with a wrench on the end of the square tube and while I'm putting like load on it to turn the ailerons I can still uh, roll it in and out uh, without any issues so the problem that I had on the other one you know where it was sort of binding up um, under aileron and elevator um, control is no longer there so uh, now I just got to get these new 7075 uh, sticks in that are at the machine shop right now and I'll be able to finish assembling the rest of this uh, setup. So the end pieces there, um, I've gone and bolted the bearings into place there, well this is one just as a test. So that gets bolted in there and it has a little fork on the end and there's a couple of washers in there to space it out so the fork doesn't touch the actual aluminum sort of square block. And as you can see, that spins nicely on there. It's just the bearing spinning. There's no nothing else sort of uh, rotating. The bolt is actually tight, uh, tight on the bearing there. And so this is sort of like a to show you kind of how it sits there. And then the square block goes on top of it, and that still has to be match drilled through there when I get the rods, um, when I get the square rods. And you can see that rotates around nicely. And so the last thing to do is obviously put the fork on there, which you actually have to put on first. Um, before you sort of put it through that uh, square end there and it wasn't that difficult to put the little uh, cotter pin in there it really wasn't hard at all just because I could just turn it on an angle and um, from the square there from corner to corner diagonally and, and get the pin in so this is what it looks like now just mocked up um, with the linkage there the right end linkage so I've got some spaces in there and that bolt will be done up tightly um, when it's all done there so uh, there's no sort of sideways movement in there but everything moves smoothly and this is what it's going to look like when it's all put together so obviously that square tube there is going to be match drilled through the 7075 uh, square tube when, when I get it and that completes that linkage there So while I'm waiting for those uh, 7075 sticks to get drilled and come back, which actually should be tomorrow, I've done some other jobs here. So you can see I've gone and got a different uh, fire extinguisher. This is an aviation sort of grey one from Spruce. I think it's a Halon one that you can use it in the cabin without you know creating a, a mess. It's not like a chemical one, I believe. Anyway, so I got that installed, and then uh, as you can see here, I've gone and actually had to bolt the aileron uh, connecting rods on the back side of these things um, because my offset ended up being a little bit further um, aft in the ship than what I thought um, but doesn't really matter because it's sort of still in in double shear there with the two brackets and I put you know a solid aluminum spacer in there just drilled through and it's all bolted up nice and tight so it's not going anywhere and as you can see above that I've also gone and bonded in that little bracket there that I was sort of pointing to that's for the stopper there as you can see um, where that bolt's going to go up and touch it 
um, because the throw here wasn't enough to reach all the way to that the existing bracket so I've just sort of cut those little bits out of some scrap um, L bracket um, carbon fiber and just um, bonded them on with some epoxy and here's the one on the other side same deal over here and got all that bolted up nicely and so those um, aileron connecting rods there have got the movement that they're, that they're supposed to have there with the rod ends and there's the uh, other bracket that you can see there that I bonded in there for where the stopper is so when I push it there you can see how that'll uh, you know go and touch on there for the stop and of course you can adjust that the length of that bolt all right so some of the other jobs I've been working on uh, with respect to the landing gear I've actually gone and removed um, the valve here that was on the um, up cycle that slowed it down and I've just kept the other one and, and because I removed that valve I had to put in a, a new hose there and I didn't have all the stuff to do a hard line so I've just gone and done a flex line in there and sorted that out and also removed that power control that I had I really didn't need that uh, once I had the valves in there it was just creating another point of failure so I've removed that and that's tidied that up a little bit and I uh, just wanted to show you here, this is how I actually um, bypass that pressure switch there. So I've just got my little um, wire clips there, tape pulling the ground and just passing it across there. So when I want to cycle the gear up, I can. And um, this is uh, my new meter that I got, my new um, uh, cable tension gauge that I bought. So I needed one that would go up to a higher um, tension setting so this one goes up to 300 pounds on an eighth of an inch cable and sort of just comes with a scale that goes 0 to 100 and then it has a calibration table that tells you um, for whatever cable thickness that you have uh, what the um, the tension is at a given reading so I'm working in the eighth of an inch cable there so there's my column I'll be looking at those numbers there and then translating off to the side to see what the tension is so this one goes allows me to go up to 300 the only one, the only one was the other one was only 75 and you know the cables capable of 2000 pounds and so are the pulleys so as long as everything else holds together um, I can run you know 300 pounds on this all day long and not have to worry so you just sort of clip it on the cable there and pull that sort of lever shut so it puts the tension on there and uh, as you can see there um, it's showing uh, reading 60 on the gauge there so and I've tightened the cable up a little bit more since the guys were here so looking at that translation table there again going down through the 1 8 of an inch column and go down to 60 and then across so that basically says that I have 180 pounds of um, tension on there right now which is fine um, and I don't have any problem taking up more than that if I need to and I didn't actually show it, but I've rewired how the dump valve um, emergency sort of power system works. So I want to cycle the gear again. I've done this a bunch of times here, but you, know, you guys don't need to see it again and again. So that's just a regular up circuit. And now down. And then this time I'll take it up, and then I'll put it down using the dump system. So I'll take it up with power, and then I just turn the ship's power all together. So literally just turning the, the main switch off for the power, which is what I'm about to do here. And then I open up the dump valve um, to, to dump the pressure across the upside and the downside circuit. Or not dump it, but just equalize it. And so that's what happens there and inside the gear pump there there's a little um, check valve that needs to be sort of um, flicked a little bit with just a tiny bit of power and that's basically what I do there I've put in a, a, um, a completely separate relay with a direct connection to the battery and a direct connection to this push button that just basically pulls it to ground and there's no other anything that will um, stop that circuit from working so it, it doesn't rely on anything else so the dump system works fine now um, and it locks, you know, the gas struts push the gear down and lock it into place. So this is showing you from the nose gear here. So going up first. And you can hear that little spring that holds the doors open here, that's sort of vibrating. And that's the down system. So. Um, gears are all working great now, and so is the dump system, so I'm all happy with that. And I've gone and uh, finally bolted the 
those brackets in there holds that uh, cable for the fuel shut off as you can see there so that's in the closed position no no fuel running there and uh, then this next little sequence here is uh, in the open position and you know the couple of weeks ago I showed it um, a couple of videos ago I showed it actually you know cycling but anyway so that's uh, that's sorted out and those brackets are super tight on there those 8L clamps so that thing's not going anywhere and lastly just to show you here so I've got one of the ailerons locked all the way up against the stop and then the other one over here is all the way down and the stop is in behind there that hits the leading edge that one there and it's actually touching up against there so they're, they're matched right now so when one's up on one side and, and hit the stop the other one down has hit the stop and so over in here you can see again that sort of stopper that I put in there you can see that bolt in there is touching my little stop bracket so all the stops match at the same point so that's basically what we want and you can see that touching there so uh, now I just gotta wait for those sticks to come back and I can finish off the assembly and then uh, of the stick stuff and then it won't be long and I'll be able to get the aircraft back out the hangar and uh, do some taxiing around again and uh, just you know just feel out the whole aileron uh, elevator control system and make sure it's uh, working the way it's intended anyway that's the update thanks again for watching and tune in again for the next one see what I've got for you